Hello and welcome to the very first A2 and AS level Mr. Pollock Biology Q&A. Now our first Q&A uh, comes from the request of Amy, who emailed last night asking for something on lung disease, amongst other things. So I thought I'd do lung disease first, and this is what we're going to get through. So, we're going to look at all four lung diseases on the AQA specification. So they are pulmonary tuberculosis, or TB, fibrosis, asthma, and finally emphysema. So I thought I'd go through each one of those individually, what causes it, what the symptoms are, and what the consequences for the lungs are. And then we'll have a little look at the end about risk factors and, and, and what they are. So first up, we're going to do TB, or pulmonary tuberculosis. And we're going to look at this one in three different stages. We're going to look at infection, so what causes it and how it occurs. We're going to look at the symptoms and then how it's passed on and how it can be treated also. So TB is caused by infection of the lungs by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a little bacteria. Now, when you're infected with TB, your immune response is going to cause formation of these things called tubercles, which are like small walled regions that form around the infection. But the problem happens when uh, the tissue inside those tubercles dies. And because of that loss of tissue, the overall tidal volume of the lungs is decreased, meaning you can take in a lesser volume of air each time you take a breath. And that's bad. So the symptoms for tuberculosis are a cough, and really you, you, you know you've got tuberculosis, or you know you might have tuberculosis when you're producing mucus, but also blood. So that blood is produced as a result of the tissue death after the formation of the tubercles. You're also going to experience shortness of breath and fatigue as a result of the lack of tidal volume. Fatigue is caused by less oxygen getting to your red blood cells and then to your working muscles because you're not producing as much ATP or energy by respiration. You're also going to have a fever as a result of the bacterial infection. And some symptoms, or sorry, some sufferers may actually suffer no symptoms whatsoever. They may be what we call asymptomatic. And that's why TB is kind of a problem, because you might be carrying TB, so you might be able to infect other people, but you might not show any symptoms yourself. So it's passed on by droplet infection, which is basically sneezes and coughs. So when you sneeze and cough, you suspend a bunch of bacteria in mucus and you spray it out into the, into the environment, into the atmosphere. And if someone else inhales that, well, they're going to get infected with TB too, if their immune system can't cope with it. If you're living in an area where there's poor hygiene, i.e. people don't cover their mouth when they sneeze and cough, um, then that's going to infect more and more people, so it's going to increase transmission. Also, if you're living in a particularly overcrowded area where people are in close proximity, then that's going to increase transmission as well. Now we can treat TB with the BCG vaccine, um, obviously which is prevention, and then the cure thing, well that's treatment with antibiotics to kill the bacteria. So that's TB. So let's move on, let's have a little look at the next one, which is going to be fibrosis. Now TB can actually cause fibrosis, but we'll have a little look at this um, as a separate entity. So in this case we're going to look at the cause, the consequence, and the symptoms. So the cause of fibrosis is scar tissue in the lungs. So this can be caused by, you know, excess coughing or damage from TB. Um, but more likely, inhalation of asbestos, which is that horrible stuff they used to use for insulation in buildings, or dust particles. And the idea is when you've got that stuff in your lungs, scar tissue forms around uh, or nearby where the dust is, and that scar tissue is less elastic. So the scar tissue is also really thick, which increases the diffusion distance at the alveoli, meaning you're going to get less oxygen into your blood uh, as readily. So it's not going to move. The diffusion is going to be less quick. So remember, with Fick's law, the things that affect the speed of diffusion are the surface area, um, the concentration gradient, and the diffusion distance, as well as temperature, amongst other things. But diffusion distance is going to be increased by that thick, nasty, horrible, minging scar tissue. Next up, we've got lack of elasticity, and that lack of elasticity means your, your lungs can't spring back and expand and, and contract as easily. And that's going to reduce, again, the tidal volume, so you're going to be able to take in less air, and therefore less oxygen, with each breath that you take. Symptoms, as with all lung disease, is pretty much shortness of breath. This one's a dry cough because there's no mucus involved with this one. Chest pain, 
and you're also going to be tired again because you're not getting as much oxygen to your working tissues, therefore less respiration, therefore less energy. Moving on, we're going to look at asthma. And again, cause, consequence and symptoms. So the cause of asthma is inflammation of the airways. And most of the time, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is due to allergies. So dust or pollen getting into your airways and causing a type 2 immune response, which is an inflammatory response, causes your airways to swell up. The consequence of that swelling is your airways are narrowed, which is bad. You also start to produce excess mucus, which is also bad. It's all going to stop air getting down to your lungs as readily. So that means the airflow is drastically reduced. Uh, the symptoms of asthma, the telltale one is the wheezing, which is the, the sort of the laboured breathing that's got that horrible, horrible whistly sort of sound. Like, <gasps> it's a really unpleasant sound, but that's, that's the telltale sign of asthma, really. And you also feel like you've got a really tight chest, like someone's got a strap around uh, your thorax is pulling it nice and tight. Now we can treat asthma um, with steroid or steroid inhalers and generally the purpose of those is to relax the muscles to increase the airflow. So you tend to find asthma sufferers will carry um, sort of an emergency inhaler to relax the muscles but they will also, they will also take a regular inhaler um, as, a, as, a daily, as a daily treatment to try and reduce the less severe symptoms. So that's asthma. The last one we're going to look at is going to be emphysema. And emphysema, again, cause, consequence, and symptoms. Emphysema, one of the main causes is smoking. But also it can be caused by extended exposure to pollutants in the atmosphere, in the air. And basically what happens is foreign particles or bits of junk get trapped in your lungs and cannot be removed. And what happens is your immune system responds by causing inflammation. It's a type 2 immune response causing inflammation and swelling and that attracts phagocytes. Now those phagocytes, they're pretty well-meaning. All they want to do is get rid of what's causing you harm but there's a sort of trade-off. They start to produce an enzyme which digests elastic fiber or elastin which is a protein and that's what's found in your alveoli and that means your alveoli are not going to be able to expand as readily and they're going to have less surface area because the walls of the alveoli are damaged. Again, the symptoms, here we go again, we've got wheezing and shortness of breath, as ever. We've got an elevated rate of ventilation as you try and breathe more frequently to get a larger volume of air into your lungs, or rather, you know, you, you can't get a large volume in, so you breathe more often to get the same volume in, but it takes more effort to do so. And that's that. The one other thing that I thought I'd round this off with was talking about risk factors. Actually, no. Pause that. There's some pictures here. We can look at which is which. Here's some pictures that illustrate the four different diseases that we've talked about. Now I'll just give you a second to try and work out which one's which. Did you get it? Here are your choices. Asthma, TB, fibrosis or emphysema. Well this one's asthma because we've got increased swelling in the bronchioles. This one's TB because we've got presence of the mycobacterium tuberculosis there. This one is fibrosis because we've got an increase in mucus in the alveoli. And this one is emphysema because we've got the damage to the walls and less surface area. Now let's talk about risk factors. So I first of all thought, well, well what is a risk factor? Well, a risk factor is something that increases the likelihood of you getting a certain disease. The obvious one is smoking and emphysema. The more you smoke, the more likely you are to get, uh, to get emphysema. So what we can do is when we have loads and loads of data for different things that might cause disease, we can look for associations and mainly we look for correlations, which is where a change in one thing affects the other. So we can establish whether something is a risk factor or not by looking for these correlations. So what you'd see is, you'd see that, hey look, these people who smoke less are less likely to get emphysema. But also, these people who smoke more are more likely to get emphysema. That's a positive correlation. The more you do something, the more likely you are to get the disease. And that's it. So Amy, I hope you've been uh, pleased with what I've put together for you. Um, and for the rest of you guys, if there is anything else on AS or A2 Biology that you have a question about, please ping, your, ping me an email with your questions to biologybyjp at gmail.com.
Thank you very much. Like, comment and subscribe.